Good morning, boys and girls. How was your spring break? Did you have a nice break? I know I did. Did you get a visit from the Easter Bunny? Were you able to go maybe hunt for eggs around your house or outside? Lots of fun things in the month of April. Okay, so now that we're back from spring break, we're gonna get back to our carpet time, okay? So the month is April. What's the month, boys and girls? The month is April. Okay, so what day is today? Yesterday was Sunday. If yesterday was Sunday, today is Monday. That's right, boys and girls, it's Monday. So if we look down here, we're missing an umbrella. Should we count to see what number of today is? What the date is today? Are you ready? Let's begin. One, two, three, four, keep counting. Five, six, Seven, eight, louder, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's right, boys and girls. Today is Monday, April 13th. What's the date today, boys and girls? Monday, April 13th. And 13 is a one and a three. So let's put our 13 on our calendar. Okay, so let's sing the Days of the Week song. Are you ready? And when we get to Monday, we're gonna say it louder. That's right, are you ready? There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Good job, boys and girls. But did we say Monday louder? Let's try it one more time and say Monday louder. Are you ready? There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Good job, boys and girls. Okay, let's go over to our months of the year. We're gonna sing the months of the year. And when we get to April, because we are in the month of April that has 30 days, we're gonna say it louder. That's right. Are you ready? January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Good job. Did we say April louder or were we quiet? Should we try it one more time? Cause we could probably do a little bit better. I want everybody singing with me. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Good job, guys. And we are in the month of April. And April has how many days? 30 days. Good job. Okay, so we have four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. Can you guess what season we're in? Are we in summer? Nope, not yet. Are we in fall? No. Winter? No, not quite. We're in spring. Winter, spring, summer, fall, we're in spring. Okay, we're gonna count, because I know it's been a while, we're gonna count to 50 today, okay? So let's come over here and let's count to 50, and I want you guys to count with me, okay? So I wanna hear you count loud. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I can't hear you, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, keep going guys, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 
40, we're almost there. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Good job, boys and girls. Now, if you wanna keep counting, you have your number charts at home and you can count all the way to 120, okay? We'll count again tomorrow. Now that we're done with our numbers, we're gonna read a book. Miss Williams got a new book over the weekend, so that way we can start reading this book. It's called Peter Rabbit Five Minute Stories. I thought it would be a good book to read this month because it's April, and in April we have Easter, and we have the Easter Bunny, and spring, and all the animals. Okay, let's go ahead and read the first story. The first story is The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the roots of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Miss Rabbit, one morning you may go out into the field or down to the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into any mischief. I'm going out. Then old Miss Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down to the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed through the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But around the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake, calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately ran into the gooseberry net and got caught by a large button on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons. It was quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew by him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not been so much water in it. Oh no, there was water in the water can. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. ka -choo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and he tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. He had not the least idea of the way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in that can. After time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lipped, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in the wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and bees, beans to her family and, 
in the woods. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to the pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was sitting, staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then she tipped of her tail, switched back and forth, and went alive. Peter thought it was best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, the little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard at the noise of a hoe. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Peter shuddered underneath the brushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon the wheelbarrow and prep peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing his onions. His back turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could. Go along and straight walk behind some black curtain brushes. Mr. B Mr. McGregor caught sight of him out of the corner of his eye, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the woods outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for the scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looking behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft and on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was a second level jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One table one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. Okay, boys and girls, thank you for coming to my carpet time today. And we'll have carpet time again tomorrow. And we'll read the second story of Peter Rabbit. Okay, have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. I miss you guys so much. Bye, guys.